The first formula that we have is called the dividend discount model. It's also known as the constant growth model or the Gordon growth model. We use this formula to determine the price or the intrinsic value of a share of common stock. In the formula, V represents that value, the intrinsic value. In the numerator, we have D1. D is dividend. Notice the subscript 1. That is the dividend next period. That is, at period 1. It is not a dividend that has already been paid. In the denominator, we have G. G represents the growth rate of the dividends. And to use this model, one has to use constant growth. R is the required rate of return on the firm stock. Okay. Now, what are some of the curveballs that we could see that make problems of this type a little more difficult? Well, first, an exam question could give you the current dividend. That is, the dividend at time period zero. And we need D1. No problem. Just use that current dividend and the growth rate to figure out next period's dividend. Because remember, the dividend at period one is simply equal to the dividend at time period zero times one plus the growth rate. The growth rate might be positive, negative, or zero. Well, really, this is no big deal. It's just basic math. You might also be given past dividends and be expected to solve for the growth rate of dividends. Again, this is really no big deal. This is a time value of money question. Simply use your time value functions, PV, FV, N, and payment, and solve for the interest rate. You might also need to solve for the required rate of return on the stock. No problem. In this case, you will certainly have all of the variables that you need to use the capital asset pricing model to solve for the required rate of return. Let's work a few problems. Question number one. Quality recycling products expects to pay a $2.15 dividend next period. The firm's dividends have been increasing at a 6% annual rate and are expected to continue at this rate. What is the most that you're willing to pay for this stock if your required rate of return is 11%? Okay, well let's start with our model. V equals D1 over R minus G. In this question, we are given D1, aren't we? Because $2.15 is the dividend that is expected next period. In the denominator, we need the required rate return which was given as 11%, and we need the constant rate of growth, which is 6%. Solving the equation, we get a stock price of $43. Our next question, Axiom Metrics Incorporated paid a $3 dividend this year. The firm expects dividends to increase each year by 5%. Investors require a 12% return on this stock. What is the intrinsic value? Let's start with our formula. V equals D1 over R minus G. Okay. Now, in this question, we were not given next period's dividend. We were given this period's dividend, so we need to solve for D1. Let's remember that D1 is equal to D0 times 1 plus the growth rate. The current dividend is $3. The growth rate is 5%, so we multiply times 1.05, and we get a, an expected dividend next period of $3.15. Plugging into our model, $3.15 is D1. Our required rate of return is 12%. The growth rate in dividends is 5%, giving us a value of $45.
Zenith Cassette Decks paid a $2 dividend last period. Due to lagging sales, the firm's dividends have been reduced each year by 4%. This trend is expected to continue. What is the most you're willing to pay for this stock if your required return is 10%? Okay, let's start with our formula. V equals D1 over R minus G. We were given the current dividend. We need to solve for next period's dividend. D1 is equal to D0 times 1 plus the growth rate. This question is different in that while we have constant growth, the growth rate is negative because dividends are being reduced each year at 4%. Okay, So we plug it into our formula. $2 is the current dividend. 1 plus our negative growth rate is the same as 1 minus our growth rate. So next period's dividend will be smaller than the current dividend won't it? And we get an estimated dividend next period of $1.92. So we plug that into our model. $1.92 in the numerator. Our required return is 10% R. We're going to subtract our growth rate. Our growth rate is negative 4%. So remember that when you subtract a negative, that's the same as adding a positive, isn't it? So 10% minus a negative 4% is 10% plus 0.04. Gives us $1.92 divided by 0.14, which gives us an estimated value of $13.71. Question number four. Lacewell Hunting Products paid the following dividends over the last five periods. They paid a dollar. The next period it grew and was a dollar three. Then it was a dollar nine, a dollar ten, and a dollar seventeen. Dividends are expected to grow in the future at the same compound rate. The required rate of return is 11%. What is the value of this stock according to the dividend discount model? Okay, we start again with our formula. V equals D1 over R minus G. We have to compute the growth rate, don't we? So let's come over here and hit solve for G. We're going to solve for the growth rate. Okay, We know that at one point, oh, the first dividend they provided us, the dividend was $1. So let's say that the present value is $1. The future value is $1.17 because that dividend grew from $1 to $1.17. Notice this growth took place over four periods. I know there's five dividends, but it grew from a dollar to a dollar three the first year, then the second year to a dollar nine, the third year to a dollar ten, the fourth year it grew to one seventeen. So while there are five dividends, there are only four periods of growth. So n is equal to four. When we solve for i, we get four. Okay? So our growth rate in the dividends. The compound growth rate is 4%. All right. Now we need to solve for D1. D1 is equal to D0 times 1 plus the growth rate. The most recent dividend paid was $1.17. The growth we've calculated to be 4%. So the estimated dividend for next period is 1.2168. If we plug into our model, 1.2168 divided by our required rate of return of 11%, our calculated growth rate of 4, we arrive at an intrinsic value of $17.38.